In this session, you'll learn how to set up other people to use Procare, known as Procare users. These might be people like an assistant director or other staff members that will need to log in and do things in the system. I'm already logged in as myself, Betty Smith, who's a system supervisor. And now, as Betty, I want to go in and put in my assistant director as someone to help me out. To do so, I'm going to go to the configuration menu at the top of the screen and choose system. I'll click the plus sign next to locations and users, and then I want to go to Procare users. I'm going to double click on Procare users, and it gives me a list of the people who are currently set up to access Procare. In this case, I have two people set up. I have the default system administrator, whose username is admin, and then I have myself, Betty Smith, set up as the director, username BOS. So I want to add another person, I'm going to come down to the Users button in the lower left and click the little drop-down arrow. And this person is not yet in Procare, so they are not an existing person. I want to add them as a new person. I'm going to click on Add New Person. And it gives me a place for the basic information about this person. So my assistant director, well, her last name is Richards, first name Dottie. And the rest of this information you could fill out later on. I'm going to skip it right now. We're going to say continue. And that will add Dottie to the list of Procure users. And then I will put in a title for her. She's my assistant director. And then what do we want her username to be? So I could ask her or I could just establish something. Usually uh, it's easy to simply use someone's initials. Case is not important on the username. The identifier is something that will be used within Procare to track who did what and when and show people who are currently logged in. And so typically this is also their initials, although it could be something else, just a unique identifier you would use to recognize it was this person. So again, I'm just going to put the same initials I used for the username. And then what user group do you want this person assigned to? System supervisor is the highest level and they have access to everything. All levels below system supervisor can and do have limitations placed on them. You can control what those limitations are. So in this case, I'm going to assign Dottie at the director level, and then we'll show you how you can manage the limitations for the director. And then you can click Save down at the bottom. And now Dottie has been added as a user. Now, you'll notice I have a button on the left called Expose. This is important. If someone's a system supervisor, they are already exposed to all locations and have access to everything. But if they're a different level, anything below system supervisor, then I will need to remember to use this expose button to choose the settings for this person. So I could expose Dottie to all my regions and all my schools. That means that she could work in both locations, add or edit data in both locations. But in this case, she only works at location one. So I'm going to set the individual exposure and I'm going to say I only want Dottie to have access to ABC Child Care number one. We'll save that and we will click exit. And now Dottie is set up as my director and you could continue under the users menu to add any other new people that you would want to be able to log in and do things in Procare. One other thing we'll point out, the very first time Dottie logs in, her username is DIR, and the very first time her password will be the same as her username, but in all lowercase letters. So in this case, her password would be DIR in lowercase letters. Next, we're going to exit the Procare users, and we'll talk a little bit about how those groups and limits work. You'll notice groups and limits has a shield next to it. This option is only visible to people who are logged in as a system supervisor. So within here, I currently have five different levels. I have the system supervisor level, which is locked as a system level cannot be changed. But then I can customize or change any of the levels below that. I can even add another level if I wanted to. Let's just take a look at the director level and we'll go and click on group limits down at the bottom. In group limits, you'll see some things are checked and not checked. One thing you can do is to click Collapse, which will give you the overall categories. And then the idea is that as you drill into these categories, items that are checked off are things that you want to block or prevent them from doing. So, for example, under Utilities, 
if I have a local installation of ProCare, I may not want this person to be able to make a backup or restore data. Be one thing that I could block them from. Under Family Data and Accounting, I have all kinds of options, and you can click in and open up the different sessions and get very specific about things you may or may not want to block. Uh, you just click clicking the plus sign and you could drill in. You can save those settings when you're done and exit. And now those settings apply to anybody who's assigned to the director level. The other thing you can do is you can move the groups up or down. So the hierarchy here does matter. Higher level groups can reset passwords for people in lower level groups. And if they're allowed to, they can create new users in lower level groups as well. So the order here does have some effect, just to keep that in mind. So that's how to go about setting up new users and establishing limits for user groups.